There's a lot of videos on YouTube about flexibility training, which ends up leaving people with analysis paralysis, just watching more and more content, but not taking action and getting results. Let's break free from this cycle as I teach you the most effective modern methods of flexibility training that you can do right now. In this video, I'll teach you how to develop flexibility in the hamstrings, hip flexors, and shoulders by pairing end range antagonistic muscle contractions with loaded stretching. What you're about to learn will give you a real breakthrough with flexibility training because it's science-based and has been proven to work with thousands of people just like you. When most people think of stretching, they think of gentle, long-duration passive stretches. Although the most common, these are not the most effective methods to increase flexibility. Let's take the hamstrings, agonist muscle in this case, for example. The antagonistic muscles to the hamstrings are the hip flexors. So if we take the hamstrings to their full range of motion, like in a seated pike, the hip flexors are in their shortened range. If we now contract the hip flexors, this is called an end range contraction. By performing eight to 10 reps of a very strong end range contraction, strong enough that you'll cramp the first few times, we actually hack the nervous system by triggering the Golgi tendon organs function to shut down muscle contractions. This can produce immediate flexibility gains in the hamstrings. And when we pair these end range contractions with a loaded hamstring stretch, we get huge flexibility improvements. Loaded stretching is a method of flexibility training where body weight or free weight is applied to static and dynamic stretches to produce astonishing results. Unlike common passive static stretching, where the muscle body is only being lengthened, with loaded stretching, we strengthen and lengthen the muscles at the same time. This builds strength through range, which is key to developing high levels of flexibility. If you find the seated pike compression lifts and Jefferson curl like I'm demonstrating here too challenging for your current level of flexibility, try these seated single leg extensions and elevated loaded pancake. Sit on a bench with your hands flat. Lift one leg as high as you can, keep the thigh still as you extend the leg and only go as far as you can without the thigh lowering to the ground. Over time, you'll be able to straighten your legs, which will mean you're ready to get into some more challenging progressions. Once you've done eight to 10 reps of each leg, we're gonna go straight into an elevated pancake. Grab a weight between probably 10 to 45 pounds for most people. Perform eight to 10 reps with a controlled eccentric contraction and keeping your spine straight. If you can't get to a 45 degree angle with your spine, bend your knees, which deloads the hamstrings. Okay, for the hip flexors, we're doing extension lifts with focus points paired with a loaded couch stretch. Grab a yoga block or a chair or really anything that just gives you a reference point that you can hold on to so that you are aware if your body's moving. Get into a posterior pelvic tilt and shift your body forward so you feel a stretch in the hip flexors. Now drive your rear heel backwards for six reps so you create a strong end range contraction of the glutes and hamstrings. Now as soon as you finish one leg, we're gonna do the couch stretch on that same leg. So get your foot onto a bench or a couch and get into a posterior pelvic tilt and allow the weight to pull you into a deep hip flexor stretch. Make sure that your front foot stays further forward than your knee, like what I'm doing. And once you're in a deep stretch, hold for 30 seconds. To increase the intensity of this stretch, you just move the knee of the rear leg closer to the couch or the bench. For the shoulders, we're doing a tuck loaded lift for the end range contraction, paired with a lat tricep insertion stretch for the loaded stretch. You can elevate your head like I'm doing here if you can't lift your hands off the ground or if you're flexible enough, have your head on the ground. Keep your elbows straight and lift your hands as high as you can for three reps of 10 second lifts. You won't need a lot of weight to start. Two to five pounds is enough for most people. For the lat tricep insertion stretch, we're getting our elbows onto a bench with a light weight in our hands. Around five to 10 pounds is a good place to start. Push your neck and shoulders towards the floor, allowing your spine to extend, which creates a loaded stretch in your lats and triceps. 
while trying to keep the head and shoulders close to the ground, get into a posterior pelvic tilt and a neutral spine. And then protract your shoulder blades and hold for three seconds before relaxing and pushing deeper into the stretch. Protracting is where you push your shoulder blades away from your spine like this. Do 10 reps of three second holds and on the 10th rep, hold for 10 seconds. For each of these sets of exercises, a good place to start is with three sets two to three times a week. If you do these end range contractions properly, you might cramp the first few times. That's normal. And if you're not pushing as hard as you possibly can during the end range contraction, you won't trigger the Golgi tendon organ and hack the nervous system. Loaded stretching is different. We don't want to force anything here as there is a risk of injury. So start light and focus on quality reps. You can't force flexibility as the adaptations occur in the nervous system. So consistency and frequency are more important than intensity. More on that in part three of this series. These are just a handful of exercises for three muscle groups. The Flexibility Masterclass contains hundreds of exercises and progressions for the whole body. So if you want to check that out, just click or tap the screen there, or otherwise you can just jump into lesson two, where I'm going to teach you all about strength through range.